Hey, what's up, guys? This is LaRosa Johnson with Freedom Zone Fitness, and I want to welcome you to my new podcast. Now, this podcast doesn't have a name yet. That's not important. But the idea here is I didn't want to keep putting this off. I wanted to dive right in and get into it. And so that's exactly what I'm doing here with this first episode. And the title for this first episode is A New Kind of Ministry. And I'll get into the details of that here in a little bit. But what I want to do first is give you an introduction to who I am, what Freedom Zone Fitness is, and how we're going to marry the Christian faith to health and fitness. But I first want to address if you're watching this on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see a video of me working out. So this video, so the audio for this is just me talking in the background. So the video that you're seeing is me working out with resistance bands. This is an actual workout that I would do. And the idea here for the podcast is for the video version is you're going to see me doing a workout with resistance bands because resistance bands are one of the pillars of my my business and with that it's fitness freedom which means that you can work out anytime and anywhere and resistance bands allow you the opportunity to do that and a lot of people are not familiar with what you can do with resistance bands so many people think that it's just for like rehab and that kind of stuff but you can do some actual strength training with these bands because the muscles really don't know anything other than resistance and so i just want to highlight some of that in this video and so that's what you're going to see is me going through an actual workout with resistance bands and you'll see me doing different workouts over the course of these episodes but that said if you're listening to the audio version you're just going to get the audio and i recommend going over to youtube to see that video if that's something that you are interested in so yeah so Let's first give a little bit of background about who I am as a person. So I'm a Christian, I'm a husband, I'm a father, and all that jazzy stuff. And I've been a Christian for really as long as I can remember. My family has a long history in the Christian faith. Like if I go back as far as I can go in Ancestry.com, that would be like my second great grandfather Eldridge Staten and he was like the first generation of my family born post-slavery and he was a career preacher and he actually founded the church that my parents grew up in so that kind of gives you an idea of like who I am in the Christian faith and for me personally I would say it was like sixth or seventh grade when I can remember making a very clear profession of faith even though there wasn't a moment of time before then that I would say that I wasn't a Christian, but I do remember that that was the point where I clearly declared that I had faith in Christ for the forgiveness of my sins and all of that. And then later on in my high school years, I knew that I wanted to preach the word of God. And growing up in the churches that I grew up in, Many of the, the pastors and preachers that I knew were bivocational. And with that, I thought I needed to take a similar path because there were very few preachers that I knew who actually worked full time and did that as their job. So I went off to college and learned a trade because Bible college and seminary were not something that were necessarily on my mind to do. And so yeah, just kind of given the context that I had. So I went off to learn computer science, switched to religious studies, and then eventually dropped out of college because I was like, you know what? I'm not going to pay to read the kind of stuff that I read for fun. And so after years of bouncing around, I finally got my foot in the door with Bible software. And that was like 2007. And that was a really great opportunity for me because one, it allowed me to continue in my Christian journey because with the teaching and preaching, let me back up a little bit. One of the things that I did from a really early age, like back in high school, was I would teach Bible studies online. I knew that I wouldn't have necessarily many opportunities to do it 
in person, live in front of people. But I was really good with words and writing, even though that was not one of my favorite subjects in school. And I was always a math and science kind of guy, but I seem to have a way with words. And so I would teach online Bible studies and would get some pretty good feedback. Like there was one guy that actually ran like an online baseball simulation league with and he was like a year or two younger than I was and he had been to church a few times and he just decided to attend one of my online Bible studies once and it said I have never heard the Bible explained that clearly before and so that was one of those moments where it kind of clicked that maybe this is something that God is calling me to do and so started a website and I've run several variations of that website over the years where I'm doing like devotionals, Bible studies and all that kind of stuff. And the most current iteration of that is my website, Bible study tips with the web address being Bible study dot tips, where I actually teach people how to study the Bible because that after many years of study and all the other things, I realized that this is the most important thing that the church needs. So that's what I have as a ministry. But moving to Texas was a great opportunity for me because one, it got me into the industry that has allowed me to really excel in things. And with that, it also gave me the opportunity to get my hands on many of the resources that I needed to continue learning without having to spend a lot of money. And then it also put me in an opportunity to where the church that I was attending when I lived in Texas allowed me to advance my Christian education because I had expressed my desire to preach and teach the word of God. The pastor took me under his wing as they had what they called a local church seminary. So he taught me Greek, Hebrew, systematic theology, church history, pretty much everything that you would learn in seminary was taught to me over the course of like five to six years through the local church for not even a dime. So that was a blessing to me. And so through that, I learned so much, like all the things that I would have learned in seminary and was able to continue to expand on that over the years. And that has led me to kind of where I am now, where fast forwarding, there have not been a lot of opportunities for me to necessarily be, become a pastor at a church, mainly because of the background and path that I've chosen, which is not going to Bible college and seminary because most of the circles that I run in now, that's kind of a requirement for being brought on, on board. And other than that, you kind of have to be brought up within a church and then brought into those ministry positions. But I haven't necessarily lived anywhere long enough for that to happen either. So that's that. And even though it's something that I've always wanted to do is be on staff, be a pastor, that's something that the Lord has not allowed me to do in this time. And so I've always done the Bible software stuff. I've done that for like the last 15 years. I really enjoyed it. And it's been one means for me to do ministry and, and help those who work in ministry in whatever capacity that is, whether it be a pastor, a missionary, or even just the Christian who wants to study God's word better. But with that, I also got tired of sitting at a desk eight to 10 hours a day. And so from there, I was able to realize with the birth of my youngest son back in 2019 my wife was on bed rest because of a complicated pregnancy and we knew that she was going to have a c-section which meant i was going to be the primary caregiver and that gave me the opportunity to have 12 weeks of paternity leave and i decided to take that as an opportunity to get into the fitness industry because i'd always been in the into fitness i grew up playing sports and then several years prior, after becoming overweight, I had lost the weight. And so I wanted to be able to help others do the same thing. And so while, while on paternity leave, I got my personal trainer certification, 
a nutrition coach certification and many other specializations along the way and founded Freedom Zone Fitness. So all that to say, that's the background of where I am right now. So with that, I want to talk about a new kind of ministry because the background that I just gave you kind of leads into the topic that I want to talk about today. So that was a very long winded introduction, but it kind of lays the groundwork for what I want to talk about. So over the last few weeks, I've been reading through the the book of James. Now, James is an epistle or a letter that was written by the apostle James. And James is the half brother of Jesus Christ. So he is the the son of Joseph and Mary. And what we see here is that he has a very Jewish background and is writing to Jewish Christians about their faith. And as I was reading through this the other day, I was reading through chapter one and there was something that really just caught my attention. And it was this. So chapter one, verse five of James. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting, for the doubter is like the surging sea, driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not, should not expect to receive anything from the Lord, being double-minded and unstable in all his ways. So what really stood out to me as I read that passage and really the Holy Spirit like fixated me on those verses because like my eyes literally could not move on to to verse nine and the verses that followed. So like I just had to camp out there that day and meditate on it and see where the Lord was taking me. And to this point, I had always, like I said, wanted to be a pastor and a teacher and have always wanted that opportunity, even though the opportunity has never come. And then I've got Freedom Zone Fitness, which I'm trying to build into a business to where I can run it as my full-time profession, right? Because right now it's a part-time thing. I'm still doing the Bible software stuff. And so I have that. And in the back of my mind, it's always been, well, if the Lord opened the opportunity for me to do full-time ministry, then I would do that. And I would easily let Freedom Zone Fitness go if that needed to be the case. And then it kind of, that thought troubled me a little bit as I was actually talking to someone about it one Sunday at church. Like when those words came out of my mouth, it's like, that doesn't sit right with me. Because how am I going to be successful in my business doing Freedom Zone Fitness if I'm, to use the words of James, double-minded and unstable in my thoughts on that business where if I'm willing to give it up at the drop of a dime, then how important is it to me? And I realized at that moment that I need to go all in on this and thought about it, pray to the Lord. And as I sought the Lord on this, it really became abundantly clear that Freedom Zone Fitness can be a form of ministry. Because one of the things that I did early on with Freedom Zone Fitness is I decided to target it towards those who worked in the field of technology. And I did that because one, I was looking for people who like being completely transparent wanted to work with people who were affluent enough to be able to afford my services. And I had worked in technology for as long as I could, as long as I could remember. So I knew the field, I knew the language, I knew the people, I knew the aches and pains and all that stuff. I knew how to talk to those people. And so it made sense to target those people as who I would go after for my, for my business. But in the same time, it didn't feel authentic to me because when I look at my life, the Christian faith is always something that's been tightly ingrained in what I do. I mean, 
for the last 15 years, my career has been in Bible software. I've worked in ministry of sorts. I have run online websites geared towards ministry. I'm at church every single Sunday and whenever the church doors are open, that kind of thing. And so I needed to find a way to marry my faith to what I was doing in business. And back in January, I had hired a business coach and one of the modules that she had as a bonus had her interviewing someone else. And in the beginning of that video, he talked about how he had a meeting with some Christian gym owners and he had mentioned to them that they should just go all in on their faith and make that something that makes them stand out because that's what's going to set them apart from everyone else in the industry that they're trying to, to do. And that kind of stuck with me. And so from that moment on, I decided to shift gears and like, you know what? I'm going to marry the Christian faith to fitness and see where it goes. And so really who I'm targeting now is as a client is Christians, primarily men who feel that they have a broken metabolism and are looking to repair that metabolism so that they can fully and abundantly live for God and family. And with that, I'm been able to really see the marrying of Christianity and fitness, especially as I study scripture, because it's one of those things where it's like, let's say you want to buy a new car and you decide, you know what? I want a red version of this car. And it's not that all of a sudden the world puts more of these red cars on the road. It's now your mind begins to notice those things because that's what you've put in the forefront of your mind. So now when you're driving, you're going to see that car everywhere. And it's been kind of the same thing for me as I've been studying scripture. Once I made the decision to begin to marry those two things, I began to see how fitness is really a key part of the Christian faith. And now I want to begin to marry those two things together and show how one, our fitness is important to God and two, how your fitness can be used as a means to glorify God. Because if we look at scripture, one of the things that we see is that gluttony is a sin. It's not one of those sins where it's talked about a lot because one, it's so pervasive in our society because so many people are overweight. At least a third of people in this nation are over like are obese. And so it's one of those things where it's like, it's hard to, for a pastor to preach that from the pulpit when you can physically see that he himself is in that position. And so it's one of the things where we don't talk about it a lot. And then it also boils down to one's theology because you cannot divorce theology from how you live your life because what you believe about God and the Bible influences how you live your life. And that was one of the things that I learned several years ago in my studies. And once I began to understand that, that really began to shift how I study scripture. So I was always someone who loved the big theology books, like reading in four, 500, 600 page theology book was nothing to me. I would enjoy reading those, read it cover to cover, read all the footnotes and all that kind of stuff. And it got to the point where it's like, you know what? This information is good, but how does it help me live out my faith better? And then it was a couple of years ago, like 2017, around the same time that I started Bible study tips, that I was introduced to the ministry of Rob, Robbie Gallaty, the pastor of Long Hollow Baptist Church in um, Hendersonville, Tennessee. And he has a ministry called Replicate Ministries that's focused on Christian discipleship. And 
one of the things that I saw from that is the reason we are left here as believers and not immediately taken into the presence of the Lord is because we have a job to do, which is to preach the gospel and to make disciples, which we see in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. And that again shifted how I perceived things. But to go back to the point of theology having an impact on how we live, what I would say there is it's very important for us to understand that because if you look at someone's theology, so let's go to eschatology or end time stuff. So if you're someone who is pre-trib, so pre-tribulation, pre-millennial, you are looking for like the great tribulation to come, the antichrist and all of that. And that perspective, you're not looking for the world to necessarily get any better. You're looking for it to get worse. And then you're looking to escape that through the rapture where Christ comes back for the church. And then the rest of the world is pretty much hell in a handbasket kind of thing. And if that's your viewpoint, then you're looking to escape this world as opposed to thriving in it. Whereas I'll be very clear and upfront. I am at this moment, a post-millennialist. And one of the things about being a post-millennialist is I am very much engaged in living the life that God has given me here on earth, because that is like my main focus. I'm not looking for God to come and take me at any given moment. I'm, exp I'm not looking for necessarily an imminent return of Christ. I'm expecting him to come back, but I don't expect that to necessarily happen like today, tomorrow, that kind of thing. And that means that I need to focus on living my life in the here and now. And it's kind of like what Jeremiah told Israel when they were taken to captivity in Babylon. He told them to don't necessarily worry about coming back to Israel and Jerusalem, but set up shop in Babylon, thrive there and make the best of the situation that you can. And in many ways, that's how I view life here, making the best of that situation. So bringing that back to fitness, I realized if that's my goal is to live the best life here that I can and glorify God in this life and not necessarily looking to escape this life and looking forward to the next life. While yes, I am looking forward to the, the life that comes after this one. That does not mean I neglect the life that I have right now. And so that means that this body that I'm given is the means that God has given me to glorify him and to do the work of ministry. And that means I need to number one, take care of that body. And by taking care of that body, it enables me to serve others to and to fulfill the commands that God has given, which are summed up as love God and love people. And by taking care of my body, which scripture tells us is a temple of the Holy Spirit, then would not want to make sure that that temple is the best that it can possibly be. And then two, how can I best love others? if I'm not taking care of myself, which is a means of not loving myself. So loving myself by taking care of my body and which enables me to have better health so that I can then fulfill all the one another commands in scripture. So the point that I'm getting at is I'm now beginning to see the parallel between the Christian faith, discipleship, and health and fitness and I'm marrying these things so that I can help Christians better live a life in the here and now 
and fulfill all the things that God has given them to do. So if that means loving God, then having a body that is capable of loving him and worshiping him faithfully and doing it well without having to necessarily lean on the aid of others to make that body better. So by that, I mean, not necessarily placing an undue burden on, on others. So like many of the diseases that we, that we face and deal with are preventable diseases. So things like high blood pressure, heart disease, like some forms of diabetes, all that kind of stuff. We can like obesity, all that stuff for the most part, we can manage and prevent through health and diet. And so when we don't make those things a priority and then we have to go to the doctor, we have undue mess, um, unnecessary medical bills, all that kind of stuff where it takes away resources and places an undue burden on others to care for our bodies. When, if we took better care of our bodies, we would have one more resources to aid others. We wouldn't be spending money on like physicians, um, medications, all that kind of stuff. And we'd be able to put that money elsewhere to fund the work of the gospel or helping others. And we also wouldn't be placing an undue burden on like the healthcare system to support us in, in those areas. So that's kind of stuff that I'll talk about later. But the idea is that our faith matters. Our life here matters. And that's why I see Freedom Zone Fitness as a new form of ministry. It's a means that God has given me to one, still do the work that I feel called to do as a preacher of the gospel. I'm not not doing that. It's like that's still something that I very much do, whether it be through like Bible study tips or even through this by sharing Christian principles to live a better life for God and others. And then two, just doing it in such a way that I know that this is glorifying God in what I do and it's helping the church. And so by helping the church, then we are helping this world better see Christ. And that's really where my heart is at in all of this. And once that, that light bulb kind of came on, that's where all of this really began to make sense for me because I was able to see, you know what? God is really gracious in all the things that he's given us. And we have an incredible opportunity to serve him in this life, in these bodies. And we need to be more mindful of that. So that's really where I'm at with all of this. And I look forward to sharing in this podcast more ways that I can help you one, see how these things are connected and then hopefully bring on others who are like-minded and have some dialogues about this as well. And then in some opportunities, I'll go all in sharing scripture and diving into the word of God. And then at other moments, I will talk about fitness and health and things like that. And then at other times, you know what? I will merge the two, talk about both when appropriate, because that's really where I see Freedom Zone Fitness going. I see it going to a place where we are bringing both of these things to the forefront of our minds that serving God is important, worshiping him is important first and foremost, and two, my health and fitness is the means by which I can better serve and worship the God that I love. And Freedom Zone Fitness will help you get there. So to kind of just talk about Freedom Zone Fitness for a minute, 
there are three pillars for Freedom Zone Fitness that we really stand for. And one, I call these the, the three F's. And they're all based on giving you freedom. So the first thing is foundational freedom. Because like we see in the book of Romans, we need to have a transformed mind. We need to stop allowing ourselves to be conformed to the image of the world and allow ourselves to be transformed and renewed by the Holy Spirit to live the life that he wants us to live. And so we really need to change our mindset because in order for us to achieve the health and fitness goals that we want, we need to think differently because the way that we've been thinking is what got us into the situation that we're currently in. And so we need to reframe that and using some secular and primarily Christian principles because the two can work together, marrying those two things to change how we think about things. And once we begin to change how we think about things, we can then move into a place where we can focus on how the health and fitness are going to work together. And then the thick, uh, And then the second thing is food freedom. So food freedom is teaching you a method of eating that does not take away eating your favorite foods and all that kind of stuff. Because you need to eat in a way that's going to be one, sustainable, and two, that you can do long term without having to necessarily rely on counting calories or weighing your food or using an app. Because those things aren't necessarily always going to be available to you or convenient to use in the moment. So what I do is I teach you how to eat in a way that's going to be sustainable long term and give you the freedom that you want to eat the things that you want instead of me giving you a meal plan or telling you to eat a particular way or a particular diet. So I give you the freedom to to find that and find what, what works for you. And then finally, there's fitness freedom. And with fitness freedom, that kind of goes back to what I talked about in the beginning of this podcast, which is the resistance bands. You need to be able to work out when it's convenient for you because we all live very busy lives. We have kids, we've got families, we've got jobs, and it's not always convenient to go to the gym and spend an hour there. So I show you how you can work out one anywhere where it's convenient for you by using resistance bands because you can take them anywhere. They're not heavy. They don't take up a lot of space. And two, you can do it anytime. So morning, evening, night, on a lunch break, that kind of thing. Because with that, the, work, the kind of workouts that I give don't take any more than like 30 minutes for the most part. And showing you that you can get a, a good workout done in a short amount of time and still get results. So that's really how Freedom Zone Fitness as a business is built is giving you the freedom that you need both foundationally with your food and with your fitness and combining those things to actually maximize the results that you get and keep those results long term so that you can fully and abundantly live for God and family. So yeah, that's that. That's the first episode and I look forward to talking to you guys on the next one and hopefully the next one isn't nearly as long we'll see we'll kind of go go with the flow for each of these episodes and they'll be as long as they need to be to get across the information that we need to get across but yeah that's all i got for now until next time grace and peace